So with WWDC now over, I'm starting to digest everything and think through how I'm going to apply some of this stuff to my app sofa and how I'm going to balance all that with the things I already had planned to work on during the summer with all the new stuff. There's tons of new stuff in iOS 17, and obviously we have uh, Vision Pro and Vision OS. So I just wanted to walk you through how I'm starting to think about and plan what I'm going to be working on over the summer. So let's look at the iOS 17 updates I'm thinking about. Apple announced the journal app and it looks pretty great and it looks like it can kind of integrate with different activity that your phone is doing or various apps are doing. I didn't see any sessions on this, so I, I need to kind of look into the docs to see how I could integrate with something like this. It could be interesting to have Sofa's activity because Sofa has an activity section where you can track the things that you've watched, played, listened to, that kind of stuff. It would be great to integrate that in some way with this journal app where basically if you've logged something uh, today, what maybe you like finished a show today, maybe that can show up in your journal app too. Uh, lock screen widgets for iPad, this is pretty simple. It seems like the lock screen widgets I have for the iPhone should just work here. Um, but that's something I have to test to make sure that that'll be okay. Interactive widgets. Uh, the widgets that Sofa has today, I don't think would benefit from being interactive, but there are new widgets I could make that would benefit from that. Simple things like if there is a list of things and you want to log one of those things to your activity, that's a very simple uh, you know interaction that you would want to do. That's a, But that's kind of a new widget that I would have to make to be able to do that. TipKit is an interesting one because, you know, you release new features and you put them in release notes, but I would be surprised if most people read release notes and TipKit is essentially a built-in way where you can explain and show new features to people as they are using the app. There's a big UI one here, and I know it's only one bullet, but it's moving the sofa design and, and structure to a tab bar design. Currently it, it's it's not a tab bar. It's just you know you have on an iPad you have a you know a two two panel or two pane uh, design here where you have stuff on the left side and when you select it it shows you information on the right side. That's on the iPad. And on the iPhone it just kind of like dives into different screens. As the app has grown and evolved I do, this is something I've been thinking about for a while. I do think that there's enough of a reason to move to this style design, a tab bar design. Could be a little more efficient to get around and the separation of various parts of the app and functionality might actually make things easier to use and easier to understand. Now the Vision OS stuff raises this question even more because you know I'm, I'm looking at all the various videos and screenshots of Vision OS right now to see how apps are kind of broken down and used. Sofa really may benefit from going to a tab bar style design within that environment as well, instead of, you know, long scrolling lists and stuff like that. I'm thinking of simpler interactions where I, again, I haven't used this thing yet. So scrolling might be not a big deal and, and very easy to do, but I'm wondering if the kind of looking with the eye tracking and, and tapping might be a better experience and interaction to do rather than having really long sidebars that you scroll through and tap and stuff like that. So, and lastly, there is some infrastructure work that I may want to do as well. Infrastructure is always kind of there. It's it's always, you know, people may call it maintenance and stuff like that. It's the same idea. You always need to be doing it. There's always parts of, of the app and the product that are a little bit old. They need to be updated, that kind of thing. Maybe I was doing stuff a little bit too quickly before, or I learned a better way to handle certain things so I can redo it. So as you can see here, I have other things that I want to do. So I, I've already started to map out some of the stuff. So like rebuild the shelf in Swift, Swift UI, rebuild the pile in Swift UI. Um, I want to do shortcuts improvements. I have that twice for some reason. There's some bigger things here like tracking progress and goals, which that's that's a huge feature that I'm, I am planning to do. Whether it'll be in that release or not, I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. So last week I made a video talking about my first impressions of the Vision Pro. Now that I've had a week to sit with it, I've watched tons of videos and, and listened to podcasts and read things of other people's 
uh, experiences with it and their takes on it and different things. These are some of the initial questions that I'm, I'm starting to kind of ask myself and things that I'm starting to plan for what I'll work on for Vision OS and Vision Pro. First thing is the basic window experience. This seems like it should work mostly out of the box and I can make it better by adding the Vision uh, OS target. And by adding that target that has some impact to the theming stuff, which I'll talk about in a second, it seems like the amount of work it's gonna take to get this to work on to get Sofa to work on uh, Vision OS should be pretty minimal, which is great for it to work in like a, vin a window uh, environment. And if you just think about the experience of that, if you have entertainment apps on there, so say Netflix, Apple TV, you can have Sofa literally right next to it and you know choosing movies you wanna watch or shows you wanna watch, that kind of stuff. So I actually think the just the basic experience of having Sofa in this environment is gonna be pretty nice. So Sofa has over a hundred themes. So when you're in there, you can choose different themes. You can choose themes, uh, different themes for like light mode and dark mode. And this is a very fun part of the experience of using the app. In Vision OS, the windows are translucent. So you can see, you know, kind of see the light coming through from behind and it feels more part of the environment. And the guidance from Apple's design team is to lean into that. And if you have kind of like a fully opaque or colored window, it's gonna feel out of place. I don't know if that's actually true. That might just be their initial guidance, but we'll wait to see once people start building for this thing. It, you know, there's a couple of ways this could go. One is like, I could just ignore that guidance and say, no, no, I'm, I'm doing, you know, themes and you can have colored windows and stuff like that. And maybe I have an option where you can just do the translucent window. But if, you know, it's really like, hey, don't do windows like that. Don't have uh, an opaque color there. Uh, I do have to think through what, what do themes even do there? Maybe maybe themes just don't exist within Vision OS and maybe that's that's just the way it is. Next thing is, you know, what does a, an immersive sofa experience look like? There's a couple angles and ways to think about this, but there's kind of use cases for it. Like what is the actual use case for going into sofa for an immersive experience? I don't know how necessary that is, to be honest with you. Like. You know, you have, you know, a list of movies you want to watch or games you want to play. That's kind of a, a very like efficient task based thing. You like, you want to go find that thing and, you know, maybe you want to organize it a little bit or maybe you want to log something to activity. It's not something you're going to be spending hours in. So the immersive experience, you know, I, I still need to think through it. It might be more of like, hey, this is interesting and cool so I can do it, which could be kind of gimmicky, but you know, sometimes you don't know until you use something. So I'm still borderline on the fence of like, is so, does Sofa even deserve an immersive experience? That being said, there's some ways I am thinking about it. Let's, you know, one is to create environmental scenes based on the content that you're viewing. This kind of is like themes in a way, kind of. Uh, but so for example, say you're, you're looking at a horror film in your list and maybe the environment around you becomes this like creepy house or something or like a graveyard or something something scary this could be interesting and maybe maybe even as you're viewing a list itself it can do this maybe you can choose a list to have certain environment types based on the list itself so when you go to a list it kind of like creates this new environment for you could be kind of interesting. I don't know how much that would be used, but it could be interesting and, and fun to play with. The next one is, this is one I, I would, when I think of like a use case for this, this is the one that I, I think is more interesting personally, is to bring elements of Sofa out of a window and put them within your actual environment. So for example, maybe you can put a bookshelf of books like against the wall in your room. Maybe uh, maybe you can stack a bunch of video games on like your coffee table in front of you or something like that. If you think about books are probably the easiest one because people really still buy physical books, but people will kind of display these things almost as like trophies and they just feel cozy being in an environment of books or surrounded by their DVDs or something like that. I think that is actually a more interesting angle to take with this because it's something that people have an emotional connection to. How much does that carry over into a Vision OS environment? I don't know. Now, when it comes to tooling, uh, there's a couple things here. And I know uh, Apple's going to be, once they release the SDK, there's also going to be some additional tooling with that as well. Reality Kit is something I need to look at. Uh, I've never touched Reality Kit. 
it's Apple's framework for uh, AR stuff. The other is around uh, 3D stuff, 3D assets. Basically, like, is there a place I can get them, or do I need to make them? And if I, you know, if I'm thinking of like really immersive stuff, like a creepy house, can I like buy assets for that, or do I have to make all that stuff myself? And then like, what's involved with that? I, you know, I've done tiny bits of stuff in Blender, but like creating an entire creepy environment or something would be be a different level that I'm not quite equipped to do. If you know of anything, please leave notes in the comments. I'd love to to start learning more about this stuff and be pointed in the right direction. And the last thing here is uh, integration with SharePlay. This is something that I think could be interesting in general, even outside of Vision OS, but Vision OS is kind of like probably going to push me to do this more. Let's say you have two people in two different locations and they want to watch a movie together. This is not that uncommon. Say they both have Vision Pro. Uh, again, we're narrowing the, the scope here. They could use Sofa, uh, share play with Sofa to choose what to watch together. And then once they're ready to go, they can start watching it uh, in whatever, whatever other app they are going to watch it in. So that, that could be a very useful thing uh, outside. And that could be done in the basic window experience. So I'm currently building out some new features that you kind of saw a little bit of a preview of as I walk through that stuff. I'll be sharing more info about that uh, in the next coming weeks. Uh, but that's the current stuff that I'm working on and I hope to get that stuff out, hopefully like middle of this summer. The last thing and the big thing is I'm waiting for the Vision OS SDK, which Apple has said is coming out later this month. So that is when uh, myself and everyone else developer-wise will be able to actually get their hands on the development environment for Vision OS and start to actually build their apps and see see what the experience is like. You know, it's going to be on a Mac and a simulator, but at least we'll be able to start doing that. And then hopefully this will help to clarify some of the uh, some of the open questions that I have and, and start to chip away at that stuff. That Notion page I went through and that whole system and database and all that stuff, I have a template that you can check out and uh, I will put that in the description if you're interested in that. Also, uh, you can check out my app Sofa, which is a downtime organizer. It helps you to be more intentional with your downtime. So I offer you to check that out as well. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.